Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. Today we're going to be taking a look at a blaster that kind of just faded into obscurity as it was released. Everybody knows that the Echo is terrible and that the Retaliator was great, but what about this one? The one in the middle that no one remembers. Let's try and find out why. <laughs> Delta Trooper, except this isn't the Elite Delta Trooper. This is the Elite Delta Trooper. This was Hasbro's second attempt at a new Retaliator after the Retaliator was released, first trying with the Modulus Recon Mark II, which immediately had a problem because you couldn't put all the magazines in it. This one though, no magazine compatibility issues except for the 50 drum which came way after this blaster was released. They couldn't have really thought about conceiving that at the time. So how did this blaster hold up? No one remembers what it is, and you probably don't either. The question now is, why? Why did it disappear and nobody remembers it? I hope to bring an answer to this question in this video, but with that said, we kinda gotta start with the design. The design of this blaster with the stock and the barrel included is just so cool. It is the first time that the Retaliator design has really been reinvented. If you think about the Retaliator, it was just a reskin of the Recon. The Modulus Recon Mark II was just another reskin of the Recon, but with a couple details changed, not this one. They went completely original with this design. It looks incredible. It looks so pretty. I honestly think this is one of the most aesthetic pleasing blasters in my collection that came out of Nerf themselves. Obviously, there are some exceptions from other companies. Oh, my sweet child. But this one in particular, it just looks so good. Even if you take the barrel off and you take the stock off, it still looks great. I genuinely think the design of this blaster is a tremendous improvement over the Retaliator's kind of non-existent design. It is a very simple design. This one actually includes a lot of interesting design details, like more finger choils and more ridges and more tiger camo and stuff like that that just makes it look really cool. If we take a look at the barrel and the stock that it comes with, they're also kind of similar to the Retaliator's. The barrel looks almost exactly the same as the Retaliator's barrel, but with a few things changed. There's no rail on the bottom, instead there's these ridges down here, which honestly looks pretty cool, looks pretty streamlined, and it has this weird orange triangle, which just so happens to blend perfectly with the Delta Trooper's shell. I think that this barrel is cool, but I honestly prefer the original Retaliator barrel. As for the stock, so many improvements. The original Retaliator stock was atrocious. It was so wobbly, it looked bad on any blaster you put it on. It was just so thin and made so cheap. This one, well, it does have some of the same issues. It is made very thick, it is very strong, and it looks super cool. With all of this like black and blue details, it honestly looks very professional for an Elite Blaster. And then when you put all of the attachments on at the same time, it makes me feel like the guy who designed this blaster came with it into the Hasbro headquarter building singing the Hallelujah song. It honestly looks just, oh, it's beautiful. But let's cut to the ergonomics. Out of the box, you get a main grip, you get a pump grip, and you get a stock. But we're going to ignore the stock for the time being, and we're just going to look at the two main grips. This grip is a one really big issue. It is just a little tiny bit too small. It's not the end of the world, but it is a little bit small, and some people are going to have a not so pleasant experience with this grip. I think it's okay for my tiny hands, but other people might not think so. As for the top grip, big, big improvement over the Retaliator. It's got ridges on the sides, like the front and the back, so that you can actually get a good handhold, and it's so much smoother and more round than the Retaliator's top grip. On top of that, the Prime is so smooth. Granted, I lubricated it because it was really rough when it first came in, but anybody can do that, and now it's trying to just... Ah, it's so good. Also, yes, slam fire, but we'll get to that in a minute. If we actually take a look at the included stock that it comes with, it's too short. Every single one of these Retaliator reskins has a stock that's too short. From the original Recon, to the Retaliator, to the Recon Mark II, to the Delta Trooper, to the Recon Mark III, to the Echo! They're all short! Why, Hasbro? Just stop making them short, please! Just... Oh, that's so much better! I would way rather use it like this. The stock looks amazing, but I wouldn't want to use it as a stock. It's just too short! Also, really quick, when you pull the trigger, this happens. I have no idea why, but that happens every time. I don't understand, but how does this blaster work? You pull it back, 
to take your magazine, to put it in, push it forward. You can single shot or it's got slam fire. The trigger pull is very, very nice. It's very clicky, it's very snappy, even though the problem is that the catch is all the way at the bottom of the trigger pull, not right when you pull the trigger, so it feels a little bit less responsive than you want it to. At the same time though, the trigger doesn't have much pull to it, so you're not really gonna notice that much anyway. I am also very happy that this blaster has slam fire. I think that was a very welcome addition to this blaster. And to remove the magazine, that looks terrible, but it's actually a button that pushes straight in, and then it mag drops for the most part. It is a little bit sticky, but big stuff. The magazine will fall out. So there's a problem with the barrel that it comes with, which I'm going to address in the firing demo. But other than that, I'm going to shoot nine shots normally, and then nine shots with slam fire, and then I'm going to use the second magazine to show the barrel issue. We put this on and the barrel. Hopefully, it'll happen on camera. Now it's kind of hard to see exactly what's going on, but I'm going to try and describe it as best as I can. So this could be a number of things, but I think it just comes down to one problem. Too much barrel drag because the inner diameter of this barrel is the small kind and there's just not much room in there for the dart to move. So the dart keeps hitting the walls of the barrel and it loses a lot of velocity by the time it leaves. It's not that big of a deal if you replace the spring in this blaster, but I have to leave these blasters stock for review purposes. I can't really do any unspeakable things to them until after I make this video. So I can't really recommend using the included barrel on this blaster if you buy it. That really sucks. If you take the barrel off, it works just fine. But with the barrel on, it just causes way too many problems. And it just sucks to say that because the blaster looks way cooler with the barrel on. So what do I think of this thing? I don't know why it flopped. I, I genuinely don't know why it failed. I prefer this blaster over the Retaliator as a stock blaster pretty much any day of the week. Obviously the Retaliator has a lot more mod potential to it because you can just pop it open. There's a bit of an annoyance with this one when you try and open it, but I'll go over that in a different video. The blaster's aesthetics are very nice, the functionality is nice, it's got slam fire, it looks amazing, and it primes very smoothly and just works a lot smoother than the Retaliator out of the box. The Retaliator had a lot of jamming issues, which I had over the years of having it, and it wasn't just because I got a new one, I had one of the original release Retaliators and it never worked properly. This one works just fine. It took a little bit of lubricant to get it up to speed, but the blaster itself, now that I've lubricated it, is honestly really good. I like this blaster a whole lot more than the Echo and the Retaliator combined. It sucks that it failed. These are really hard to find now for some reason. These are available on Amazon, but they're pretty expensive. I will leave a link in the description below, but be prepared to pay some ridiculous prices for this thing if you do decide to get one. I really wish I didn't have to say that because it seems like it would be so easy for them to just keep releasing this blaster. People like this blaster. I just wish it didn't fail. I think this blaster is actually good. Thanks for watching. Bye.